Back in 1991, I came out with my first book, African American Humanism and Anthology. And this was the first book to deal with humanism in the African American community and how humanism was able to substantively develop the uh, black intellectualism and activism throughout the United States. And a lot of the people in here uh, were some of the most important individuals in the history of uh, black people in the United States. And they were humanists. And uh, this is the first book to really deal with that situation. And so I came out with this in 1991. And many of the people in this book were also very strong defenders of evolution. And uh, one of those people were Melvin B. Tolson. Uh, Melvin B. Tolson, you might have known something about him a few years ago. There was a movie called The Great Debaters. And one of the stars was Denzel Washington, who played Melvin B. Tolson in that movie. And the movie was about the uh, very small Wiley College. It was a historically black college in Texas. And they had the best debaters in the entire country. And thus, they were called the great debaters. Melvin B. Tolson was their coach. And uh, he, were, he was able to take them all over the country. And they were going undefeated. They were going against the best debaters at white universities all over the country. But Melvin B. Tolson was a humanist. and he. He wrote a uh, column for a Washington newspaper, a black newspaper, <laughs> and uh, he was also uh, someone who was one of our truly great scholars. But he was uh, writing uh, very critically of religion, but he was also writing in defense of evolution. And whenever his, his students came to him, he taught them about evolution and taught them the importance of evolution. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, who was one of the great intellectuals of uh, the 20th century. And W.E.B. Du Bois helped to found the uh, NAACP. And he worked for the NAACP for 26 years as, as the editor of a journal known as The Crisis. And Du Bois was also a good friend, not only of Clarence Darrow, but of John Dewey, one of the great humanists of the 20th century. And uh, Du Bois was also a defender of evolution, and he was also an agnostic. There was also Hubert H. Harrison, and he was uh, one of the first truly great African-American leaders. And he came out of, uh, he was originally from the Virgin Islands, and he was in Harlem, and uh, he was a very class-conscious radical as well as a race-conscious radical, and uh, he was regarded as the black Socrates of his day. And he was also a very great defender of evolution. He would talk about Darwin and Huxley, and he could, he could quote from their works uh, numerous pages at a time. He had a photographic memory. And uh, he would of, often go through Harlem uh, talking about the importance of evolution. And uh, sometimes he would be very critical of organized religion. Not only did he promote secularism, but he was also a skeptic because he would often challenge people who believed in spiritualism or the belief that our spirits survive after we die. Uh, people believe in ghosts and the like. And so he was, a, he was a, a skeptic and he was a humanist, he was a free thinker, and he was a strong defender of evolution, and he was one of the truly great African American leaders of the earlier part of the 20th century. And then we have Claude McKay. Mm -hmm. Claude McKay was a truly great poet of what was known as the Harlem Renaissance. And the Harlem Renaissance was a literary movement, and it was a humanistic movement. And it, uh, it featured a lot of the uh, truly great poets, great writers, great thinkers, back during the earlier part of the 20th century, all the way up to about 1929 or so. And Claude McKay, he uh, came out with some uh, excellent poetry. But as he was a child growing up in Jamaica, uh, he had an older brother named Uriah Theo, or U Theo. And U Theo was a member of the uh, British Rationalist Association. So U Theo uh, was an agnostic, and uh, he was very critical of religion. And uh, as the much older brother of Claude McKay, he was very influential. And Claude looked up to him and tried to follow his lead. So when Claude was in elementary school, he had an agnostics group in Jamaica. And uh, the fact of the matter is that there were a lot of Jamaicans who were also uh, humanists and who were members of the Rationalist Association of Britain. 
and Uthea was one of the, the more influential ones among them. Uh, after uh, Claude grew up, he became one of the truly great poets of the uh, 20th century. And uh, his poetry was a protest poetry. And he wrote one excellent poem called If We Must Die. Uh, if We Must Die was a poem that was read by, um, it was read during, the, uh, the, during World War II by Winston Churchill in order to rally his people uh, uh, when they were being attacked by the Nazis. Even though he didn't give credit to the actual author, uh, uh, McKay was the, the one who authored the poem and uh, it was one of the more influential poems of the 20th century. And it's a very short poem, so I'll just read it quickly. It goes, if we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot. White round us bark the mad and hungry gods, making their mock at our accursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows, still one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we'll face the murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. And that was written in response to what black people were going through back during the earlier part of the 20th century. I first started back in 1989, and uh, we had the only organization in the world dedicated toward reaching out to more uh, black atheists and agnostics and free thinkers, humanists. But today there are several more, especially on the internet. Uh, today you have organizations like the Black Atheists of America, you have the Black Skeptics, you still have African Americans for Humanism. You have the black non-believers of Atlanta and the similar groups in Chicago and Kansas City. Uh, you have the Centers for Inquiry in Harlem. You have Center for Inquiry in Washington, D.C., one in Indianapolis and numerous other places. So uh, things have changed a lot, but we do still have a, a, a long way to go.